The series starts with a big storm in the Joseon era Korea. It's all dark and stormy at night, and the fishermen are having a hard time. People in the coastal village are rushing to find cover from the storm. The next morning, everyone in the village is busy cleaning up the mess the storm made. They're also picking up all the fish that got washed up on the shore because of the storm. While one villager is collecting these fish, he gets a big surprise. He finds a woman in a cave near the shore, but she's not like any ordinary woman. She's part human and part fish, like a mermaid. Word spreads quickly, and soon a bunch of villagers come to check out this unusual discovery. They decide to bring the mermaid, whose name is Seem Chong, back to the village. When Mr. Young, one of the village leaders, arrives, he came to the pond where Seem Chong was sitting. But then, one of the villagers reminded him not to touch her, because she can erase the memories of those who touch her. Right at that moment, Mr. Young told everyone to get ready for a big party because the mayor, Kim Dumyong, was on his way to the village. A little later, Mayor Dumyong arrived, and Mr. Young welcomed him warmly. Then Mr. Young showed the mermaid they had captured to the mayor. Mayor Dumyong, when he saw Seem Chong, asked Mr. Young what he planned to do with her. Mr. Young confidently said he wanted to make special mermaid oil. But Mayor Dumyong didn't like that idea at all. He threatened to expose some of Mr. Young's mistakes in running the coastal area if he didn't let the mermaid go back into the sea. So in the end, Mayor Dumyong successfully released Seem Chong into the ocean. As she reached out her hand to him, from a distance, Mr. Young and his men talked about how it was a bad idea for humans to touch mermaids because it could lead to problems in the future. Now, let's fast forward to the present day. There's a guy named Ho Jun Jae, and he's known as a professional swindler, along with Joe Numdu and Tae Oh, pretends to be technicians, and goes to a lawyer's office to carry out their plan. One of the security guards gets suspicious of these new technicians and tries to stop them. But Jun Jae does a clever trick with his lighter to hypnotize the guard. The guard starts seeing them as the usual technicians who come to the office. Once they fool the guard, Jun Jae and his crew go into the lawyer's office. Jun Jae is going to pretend to be a lawyer who's meeting a client numbed Jung Jinog. Meanwhile, Numdu acts like Jun Jae's assistant, and Tao keeps an eye on the real lawyer from the rooftop. Inside the office, Jinog asks for Jun Jae's help with her son's case, which is connected to her friend's death in a really strange way. At the same time, Tao tells Jun Jae that the real lawyer is on his way back to the office. So, Jun Jae quickly invites Jinog to discuss the case over lunch. In the elevator, Jinog makes a deal with Jun Jae. She promises to take him on a vacation in the Mediterranean region if he can solve her son's case. Later on, after they successfully tricked Jinog, Jun Jae and his friends go their separate ways at the airport to enjoy their vacations. While on the plane, Jun Jae meets a flight attendant numb Min Ji, who tells him a story about the Mediterranean Sea and the last mermaid there. But he doesn't believe it and thinks it's just a fairy tale. Turning to Seem Chong, who's swimming in the Mediterranean Sea wearing a special jade bracelet. Suddenly, there's an underwater explosion that startles her and washes her up onto the shore. To her surprise, she realizes that her mermaid tail has turned into human legs. Panicking, she jumps into a nearby pond to change back. Just as she's hiding in the water, she spots Jun Jae approaching the pond. A little while later, Jun Jae got annoyed when he found his hotel room all messy with food everywhere. To his surprise, he discovered Seem Chong in his closet, wearing his hoodie. Thinking she was Korean, he tried to ask her where she was from, but she didn't seem to understand him. When he approached her to get her out of the closet, she used her special powers to push him away. So Jun Jae decided to call the authorities and waited with Seem Chong until the police arrived. He even took a photo of her as evidence that she had sneaked into his room. After she was taken into custody, Jun Jae relaxed and looked at a picture of Seem Chong wearing a valuable jade bracelet. He sent the bracelet to Numdu for further investigation. Later that day, Jun Jae went to have lunch with Min Ji at a fancy restaurant. Just as he was about to give her a necklace, he got a message from Numdu, who told him that the jade bracelet was worth a lot of money. So Jun Jae changed his mind about giving the necklace to Min Ji and said he needed to show it to his mother first. He quickly excused himself to get the bracelet from Seem Chong. Meanwhile, at the police station, the officers were frustrated because Seem Chong wouldn't answer their questions and was playing with tissues. When one of the officers took a tissue, she got angry and pushed him against the wall. Just then, Jun Jae arrived to find Seem Chong in a holding cell. He used his hypnotic skills to make the officer think she was his wife, and that led the officer to release her. 
Outside the police station, Jim J wanted to take Steam Chong's jade bracelet, but she got ready to defend herself. Instead, he praised the bracelet to make her happy. To cheer her up, he took her to a mall. However, she was scared of the escalator, so Jun Jae decided to carry her. This earned him admiration from people at the mall. Jun Jae then took Seem Chong shopping for shoes and better clothes. While she was trying on new clothes, Jun Jae left the store briefly because of a call from Numdu. When he returned, Seem Chong had disappeared. He hurried to find her and discovered her at a daycare center, enjoying a lollipop. He seemed to scold her for not waiting, but she just smiled at him. Despite his annoyance, Jun Jae invited Seem Chong to eat at a restaurant. She ate with her hands, which amused other customers. Jun Jae even taught her to use a fork. While doing so, he used his hypnotic powers to take her jade bracelet without her realizing it. He intentionally left her behind after getting what he wanted. But as he was leaving the hotel, he unexpectedly felt concern for her. He found her waiting in the rain in front of the closed mall and offered her shelter under his umbrella, making her happy. He invited her to stay in his hotel room, but she playfully messed with the room key card, causing the lights to go on and off. Annoyed, Jun Jae quickly finished his shower and warned her. Another time, she interrupted him while he was using his laptop, so he gave her the laptop and decided to rest. The next morning, Jun Jae was surprised to see Seem Chong had stayed up all night watching videos on his laptop. She looked tired. Soon, Jun Jae got a message from Numdu that Jinog's henchmen had found them. So he quickly packed up and wanted to leave. But when he tried to go, he found out that Jinog's henchmen had surrounded the hotel. When they entered the room, they got a shock because Jun Jae had set up a fake bomb. After realizing it was fake, they searched for him, but he had escaped using a cloth. They tried to chase Jun Jae and Seem Chong, who were riding bicycles to get away from them. Seem Chong had learned some fighting moods from watching videos on Jun Jae's laptop, and she used them to fight off some of the henchmen. Unfortunately, one of the henchmen aimed a gun at Jun Jae and took him away in a car. Jun Jae tried to signal Seem Chong not to follow, but she grabbed a bike and tried to stop the car. Jun Jae caused a commotion in the car, making it crash into a roadside stall. He took the chance to escape with Seem Chong. When they reached a safe place, Jun Jae warned her not to trust him, but she thought he was a good person because he didn't abandon her at the mall. So he decided to return the jade bracelet he had taken from her. The next day, Jun Jae took her to a place called the End of the World, where there was a lighthouse on the edge of a cliff. He told her about a legend that said people who separated there would eventually reunite. He also shared how his mother left him there as a child and showed him his numb carve on a stone. Suddenly, Jinog's henchmen arrived after finding a map in Jun Jae's hotel room that led them there. They were trapped on the cliff, and Jun Jae begged them to let Seem Chong go, but she claimed to be his wife and signaled him to jump off the cliff. So Seem Chong pulled Jun Jae into the sea, turning into her mermaid form. They kissed and Jun Jae started losing consciousness. He woke up on the beach, unable to remember why he had jumped into the sea while being chased by Jinok's henchmen. Strangely, he had no memory of Seem Chong and didn't realize she had given him her jade bracelet. On another day, Jun Jae was on a plane and Seem Chong was watching it fly by the sea, remembering Jun Jae's words about going back to Seoul. Because of this, she said goodbye to her mermaid friends and started her journey across the ocean to get to Seoul. Meanwhile, Jun Jae had returned home to Seoul, and he had dreams about Seem Chong expressing her feelings to him, but he couldn't remember who she was. Three months later, Seem Chong approached a fishing boat and asked for directions to Seoul. The fisherman pointed her in the right direction, and she continued her journey, leaving the fisherman amazed as she swam toward Seoul. One day, Seem Chong, now on the shore of a beach, met a group of women, so she asked them for directions to Seoul. The women offered her a ride because they were also heading to the same city. One of the women, Chisia, who had liked Jun Jae for a long time, asked her household assistant, Mo Yu Run, to prepare food for Jun Jae's birthday. While making the food, Yu Run mentioned that it was also her son's birthday that day. Sia then went to Jun Jae's house, where he lived with Num Du and Tao, to deliver the food to him. When Jun Jae tasted it, he suddenly remembered his mother's cooking, which was the same every year on his birthday. His mother used to take him to a huge aquarium as his birthday gift. On the other hand, Yu Run sat in a park, looking at a photo of her son who is Jun Jae. Later, while working for the Sia family, she was seen preparing food that Sia's elder sister, An Jin Ju, would give to the prestigious Dr. Ho Il Jung family in Seoul. When El Jung and his family had the meal, he, who is Jun Jae's father, 
remembered Yu Ran's cooking and the warmth of his small family in the past. During El Zheng's journey to the hospital where he worked, he asked his assistant Num, who was driving him, about Jin Jie's news. Unbeknownst to him, all their conversations were overheard by his wife, Kung So He, who had secretly placed a listening device in her husband's car. When she found out that her husband was still thinking about his family from the past, she contacted Madei Yang, a fugitive from the police, to find out Jun Jie's whereabouts, thinking he might be at the giant aquarium. As so be suspected, Jun Jie went to the giant aquarium on his birthday, hoping to reunite with his mother. Instead, he met Sim Chong, who kept looking at him. He asked her if she knew him, but Sim Chong didn't answer. The aquarium staff wanted to capture her for entering illegally. Curious about Sim Chong, Jun Jie pretended to be a detective to take her away from there. Later, Jun Jie showed her a photo sent by Numdu, and she was surprised to see herself in it, wondering how she got there. Jun Jie became even more curious about her when she knew his real Numi, although she didn't say how. He then took Sim Chong to see fireworks by the Hun River, which scared her, and she hugged him. From a distance, Dae Yong watched them and reported to Sovi. Now back to Jun Jie, he initially told Sim Chong not to follow him and gave her his phone number, saying she could contact him if she wanted to talk about the forgotten memories from his Mediterranean vacation. However, as he was about to leave, he felt sorry for Sim Chong and decided to take her with him. When they got home, Num Du and Tao were surprised to see Sim Chong there. Jun Jie briefly explained the situation and offered her some food. He also asked about the jade bracelet he had found. Sim Chong admitted it was hers and mentioned she had many similar ones at her home. Num Du, interested in the bracelet's potential value, suggested that Sim Chong stay with them. When he asked for her name, Sim Chong said she didn't have one. So Ho Jun Jie gave her the name Sim Chong on the spot, even though Joe Num Du said Ho Jun Jie was teasing her with that name. She then asked Tao for his name, but he was busy with his laptop and checking for Che Sia at the front gate. Soon, Sia arrived and brought a birthday cake for Jun Jie. She was surprised to hear Sim Chong confidently introduce herself as Sim Chong, the num Jun Jie had given her. Sia smiled when she heard the num. While Sim Chong was still talking to Sia, she got scared when a vacuum cleaner bumped into her and hugged Jun Jie. Sia saw it but didn't say anything about it. They all decided to celebrate Jun Jie's birthday with the cake Sia brought. After blowing out the candles, Sim Chong grabbed the cake with her hands and started eating it surprising everyone. Sia then cut a piece of the remaining cake for Jun Jie and made him eat it. Sim Chong watched how gracefully Sia was eating and tried to copy her, even though she was annoyed with Sia, who was trying to get closer to Jun Jie. After the birthday celebration, Sia took Num Du aside and asked about Sim Chong. He explained that Jun Jie allowed Sim Chong to stay temporarily because he felt sorry for her due to her mental health condition. Meanwhile, Jun Jie led Sim Chong to an empty room above his own. When he was about to rest, he heard Sim Chong making noise in the room, excited about having her own room. He asked her to settle down. On another day, Dae Yong tried to find Jun Jie's house by offering newspapers in the area where Jun Jie had gone missing. He seemed to mark each house he visited with a pattern until he encountered an angry man whose sleep had been disturbed. As the man entered his house, Dae Yong began drawing a pattern known to the homeowner who threatened to report him to the police. That evening, Jun Jie, who was about to return home, received a message from Num Du not to come back immediately because there had been a murder in their neighborhood, and many police officers were patrolling the area. Num Du also reminded him that the detective who had been looking for Jun Jie for the past three months was at the scene. Meanwhile, a police officer suspected that Dae Yong committed the murder based on the method and pattern of the crime, but his colleague Kung Hoon disagreed as the victim was a loan shark, which could provide a motive for the murder due to revenge. At the same time, Dae Yong, disguised as a police officer, rang Jun Jie's doorbell, and Sim Chong answered the door. Jun Jie, however, suddenly asked Num Du to step aside and intentionally broke through the police officers patrolling the streets. Now, let's go back to the Joe Sand era. Sim Chong, whose real Numbi is So Wa, was walking when she was confronted by Yong and his men who wanted to hurt her leg so she couldn't move. Luckily, Dum Yong came to her rescue and took her to a hiding place. They didn't know that one of Yong's henchmen was spying on them. Meanwhile, at Yong's residence, a man arrived and got angry with Yong for making him lose his job. He even threatened to expose Yong's crimes. Surprisingly, the next morning, the man was found dead on the beach, but there were no signs of physical harm on his body. 
Dum Yong and other officials who investigated the incident believed it wasn't murder. Back to the present day. When Sim Chong met Dae Yong, he pretended to be investigating a murder case in the area. Jun Jae arrived and blocked Dae Yong from entering his house. He asked the police officers who had arrived to check Dae Yong, but they refused and let him go. Later, Sia returned to Jun Jae's house, but Sim Chong, who answered the door, didn't let her in. Sia got angry and tried to push the gate door, causing her to fall. Sim Chong then told Sia that Num Du and Tao hadn't come home the previous night, leaving her alone with Jun Jae. Frustrated, Sia declared that she would marry Jun Jae and accused Sim Chong of being a freeloader in his house, which led Sim Chong to bite her finger. After the incident, inside the house, Jun Jae treated Sia's wound and scolded Sim Chong. Later, Jun Jae gave Sim Chong a phone and a transportation card and asked her to leave his house. He showed her how to use the smartphone and told her to contact him if she wanted to share what happened during his Mediterranean trip. Sim Chong told him to meet her at Num Sun Tower when the first snow falls, but he declined the invitation and asked her to leave immediately. As Sim Chong walked away, Jun Jae secretly checked her phone's GPS to track her location. While his friends Num Du and Tao criticized him for sending her out into the cold and dangerous streets, especially since she had given them an expensive jade bracelet. Jun Jae quickly checked her location and rushed to find her. That night, when Sim Chong saw the first snowfall, she ran towards Num Sun Tower. Jun Jae, realizing it was snowing, remembered her and rushed to follow her, using the GPS on her phone. However, as Sim Chong was about to cross the street, she got hit by a car driven by Jun Jae's stepbrother. Po Chi Yun, and lost consciousness. Jun Jae arrived at Num Sun Tower but couldn't find her, causing him to worry. He searched for her and found her phone and brochures scattered on the road, stained with blood. He quickly gathered information about the accident, located the hospital and saw Sim Chong unconscious. Her body temperature was dangerously low. Jun Jae called for help, and the doctors worked to save her with a defibrillator. Jun Jae sat by her side, holding her hand, anxiously waiting. In her dream, Sim Chong saw Dum Yang reaching out to her from his ship. Eventually, she woke up. Later, Num Du, who had heard about Sim Chong's condition, was surprised to learn that she had regained consciousness after doctors initially thought she had passed away. Meanwhile, Chi Yun was questioned by the police about the accident, but they let him go since there was no evidence of drunk driving. When Chi Yun went to visit Sim Chong, he met Jun Jie, who asked if he was the person who had hit her. Chi Yun explained that she had suddenly jumped into the road, and it was an accident. As Jun Jae was leaving, he overheard Chi Yun receiving a call from El Jong, which reminded him of his disappointment with his father. He also saw Chi Yun getting into his car to leave, and Nup noticed Jun Jae entering the hospital. A few days later, Sim Chong was in a recovery room, and Jun Jae kept an eye on her from outside her door. When he left the hospital, Sim Chong met Nup, who told her that El Jong was looking for Jun Jae. El Jung's assistant advised Jun Jae to forgive his father, who had always missed him. Dae Yong was secretly watching them from a distance. One day, Sim Chong was in a wheelchair at the hospital and saw a woman named Su Jin protesting about her daughter's Yi Dun suspected medical malpractice case. The hospital's vice president, Baon Chun, scolded a security guard for not handling the protest well. Sim Chong was angered by Baon Chun's unfair behavior and kicked him in response. Because of her actions, Sim Chong was taken to Byung Chun's office, where the doctor who had treated her was surprised by her ability to kick, especially since she had a broken leg just a few days ago. The doctor had asked Sim Chong why she did it, and she innocently said she was copying what the hospital's vice president, Byung Chun, had done when he kicked a security guard. Annoyed, Byung Chun decided to report her to the police. After that, Sim Chong met Su Jin in the hospital garden. Su Jin regretted making her daughter work part-time, which had made her ill. Sim Chong offered to erase painful memories related to Yi Yoon, but Su Jin declined, wanting to cherish all memories of her daughter, even if they caused pain. Back at home, Jun Jae and the others watched a video of Sim Chong kicking Byung Chun and were amazed, considering she was still recovering from her injury. After seeing Byung Chun's behavior, they decided to teach him a lesson. They spread news about the director's son returning to Korea after 10 years abroad fooling Byung Chun and the hospital staff into welcoming Jun Jae as the director's son. Tao posed as Jun Jae's secretary to help with the plan. Jun Jae borrowed Byung Chun's phone, claiming his own was out of battery, so they could swap it with another phone. Tao went into a room to hack into and retrieve information from Byung Chun's phone. 
At the airport, the real director's son was picked up by Numdu and taken on a city tour, giving Jun Jae and Tae Oh enough time to complete their mission. Tae Oh successfully hacked all the information they needed, including a report about Yi Hoon's death. They confronted Byung Chun with evidence of medical malpractice, embezzlement, and bribery. Byung Chun was shocked to realize Jun Jae wasn't the director's son. Jun Jae explained he wanted Byung Chun to drop charges against Sim Chong, apologize to Su Jin and report the true facts about Yi Hoon's death. Baung Chun agreed and Jun Jade and Tao were thrilled with their success. Meanwhile, Num had a car accident, which was caused by Dae Yong on Sodi's orders. Dae Yong ignored calls from Jun Jae and took Num's phone. El Jung received news of Num's accident during breakfast, and so he tried to downplay it, but Chi Yoon grew suspicious of his mother. At the police station, Detective Hong Dong Pyo and his team discussed Dae Yong who was still on the run. They suspected him in a recent murder but lacked evidence. They found marks on doors visited by Dae Yong and resumed their investigation. While inspecting doors, they spotted Dae Yong, but he noticed he was being followed and escaped. Sim Chong was near a river, thinking about jumping in, but a man named Yu Jong Hoon stopped her, concerned for her safety. He invited her to his office, where she discovered he was a fellow merman. Sim Chong explained she wanted to catch fish in the river, because she didn't have money for food. Jong Hoon suggested they collect valuable pearls from their tears by watching sad movies and catching the tears in plastic containers. At the hospital, Oh Jong and Sohee visited Num, who was in a coma. Num's wife, Myung Sin, found his accident suspicious, since he didn't like driving drunk. Back at Sin Chong's house, she cleaned windows and watched as Jun Jae and the others left. When they were gone, she returned to the pool, her underwater home. Jun Jae came back to get his forgotten phone and saw Sim Chong swimming, but he didn't see her true mermaid form as she quickly got out of the pool and appeared human again. Sim Chong was practicing how to collect pearls by watching a sad drama. When Num Du saw her with a bag of pearls, he was curious and asked where she got them. Sim Chong casually said it was from her hard work, making Num Du even more curious. Meanwhile, Jun Jae didn't know about Num's accident and kept trying to contact him. When Num's phone didn't respond, Jim Jae sent a message, and Dae Yong, who had Num's phone, replied inviting Jun Jae to meet and discuss El Jong. In the afternoon, Jun Jae was at the library reading about Dum Yong, who had married a minister's daughter but lost her to illness just a year after their marriage. Dum Yong woke up in the Joseon era, taking care of the unconscious So Hwa and putting a jade bracelet on her wrist. In the present, Jun Jae was puzzled by the young age at which the Joseon mayor had died. In the evening, Jun Jae went to the address Dae Yong had given him. He noticed it was an empty building and became suspicious. He called Numdu and entered the building with his weapon. Inside, he saw surveillance cameras and heard a ringing phone, which turned out to be in an empty room. While looking for Num, Dae Yong appeared with an axe, but he fled when a car horn sounded, thinking the police were coming. Jun Jae left the building, and there were many taxes to confuse Dae Yong. He took a taxi to meet Sim Chong at the Hun River. When he arrived and saw Sim Chong, he suddenly felt chest pain and fainted. Sim Chong tried to wake him up, and he had a dream of meeting Dum Yong, who asked him to protect a woman. When he woke up, he hugged Sim Chong. Back at home, Num Du asked about the man who attacked Jun Jade in the empty building. They saw news about Dae Yong being a fugitive and Sim Chong mentioned seeing him lurking around their house. Meanwhile, Dae Yong went to Sohee's house, disguised as a mailman, to ask for money and she gave him some before telling him to leave. The following day, Jun Jae got a call from Chi Yoon, who told him about Num's condition in the hospital after the accident. Meanwhile, Oh Jung went to an eye doctor and learned he had cataracts but could prevent blindness with medication. In Num's hospital room, Jun Jae, who was visiting, felt something suspicious about the accident. He asked Myung Sin about the car's black box, but it was damaged, so the police couldn't check it. Sim Chong, waiting for Jun Jae outside the room, was approached by Chi Yoon, who knew she was close to his stepbrother. Later, El Jung met Chi Yoon talking to Sim Chong and asked about her, surprising Chi Yoon. Jun Jae then came out of Num's room, shocking El Jung with his presence. They had a private conversation in the hospital cafeteria. El Jung asked about the scar on Jun Jae's face. Jun Jae coldly asked his father not to care about him as he did when he left Jun Jae and his mother in the past. El Jung wanted to make amends, but Jun Jae rejected him and walked away. El Jung refrained from calling his son as his vision suddenly blurred. 
Back home, Jun Jae took fever medicine and told Seem Chong she could leave any time. Despite wishing her away that night, Seem Chong decided to take care of him when he was sick. She believed Jun Jae pretended not to like her, but actually wanted her around. Seem Chong asked him to be more open because she would always listen. Hearing this, Jun Jae held her back and kissed her. Another day, Sia came over to Jun Jae's house with some information from her workplace. She had learned that archaeologists had discovered artifacts believed to be Dumyang's residence in the past. In the Joseon era, Dumyang wondered how he could communicate with his future self about the events to come. A few days later, Num Du and Jun Jae were planning their scheme to trick Jinju by posing as foreign investors. They didn't know she was Sia's sister. When Jinju asked about her role as their fiancé Tao, dressed as a woman, emerged from a room as he was supposed to play that part. Jun Jae refused, so Num Du asked Seem Chong to pretend to be Jun Jae's fiancé, and she happily agreed. Another day, they began executing their plan. Jun Jae and Seem Chong pretended to be foreign investors, shopping for various items in a mall. This prevented Jin Ju, who was also at the mall, from using the VIP room that Jun Jae and Seem Chong were occupying. When Jin Ju saw them and overheard their conversation about Dubai, she became curious about the couple. She called Num Du, playing Jun Jae's assistant, to inquire about Jun Jae's business of buying luxury items. Num Du explained that he was escorting a foreign investor from Dubai sparking Jin Ju's interest in meeting the investor. She wanted to invest her money and even invited the investor for a meal at her home. During a meal at home, Jin Ju shared her encounter with an investor at the mall and her plan to invest her money. However, Sia overheard the conversation and warned her sister not to be deceived. Jin Ju tried to convince Sia that the investor she met was genuine. Jun Jae, on his way home, received a call from Sia informing him about the discovery of artifacts related to Dumyang. He asked Num Du to drop him off because he wanted to meet her. When he arrived at the storage room with the artifacts, he asked Sia to wait outside as he wanted to inspect them alone. Inside the room, Jun Jae saw a painting of a man, but a power outage occurred due to lightning. He used his lighter to examine the painting and was surprised to see that the figure resembled the man from his dreams. In the past, Dum Yong had intentionally asked a painter to create his likeness in a painting to send a message to his future self. In the present, Jun Jae, while studying the painting, discovered a message that reminded him of his dream, where Dum Yong had asked him to protect a woman. Unfortunately, he didn't understand who the woman he needed to protect was. Sia entered the room later, frightened by the power outage, and was shocked to see that the painting resembled Jun Jae. One morning, during breakfast with his family, Eul Jung felt that his eyesight was deteriorating, so Su Lee gave him some medicine and told him to rest. Chi Yun stared at his mother suspiciously suspecting that she hadn't really given medicine to his father. Meanwhile, Jun Jae rushed to the hospital upon hearing that Num had regained consciousness. Num, unable to move or speak, only cried when he saw Jun Jae, leading Myung Sin to suspect that her husband wanted to convey something to Jun Jae. Turning to Jin Ju's husband, Cha Dong Seek, who had learned about his wife's invitation to a foreign investor for dinner, tried to warn her about scams involving foreign investors. As Sia had mentioned earlier, Jin Ju attempted to convince Dong Seek by saying that Sia didn't understand anything about investments. Shortly after, Jun Jae and the others arrived outside Jin Ju's house. Ho Jun Jae and Jo Num Du reminded Seem Chong not to use Ho Jun Jae's real name during the meal to make their plan work. After entering the house, it seemed that Sia had arrived, and as she was about to enter, Jin Ju asked her to buy some fruit for the guests, causing Sia to leave again. Inside the house, Jun Jae enjoyed the food served and was reminded of his mother's cooking when he tasted the rolled eggs. Jin Ju noticed that the investors seemed to like the dish and asked Yu Run to make it again. Unfortunately, when Yu Run placed the freshly cooked rolled eggs on the table, she didn't realize that the man sitting there was Jun Jae, and he only saw her back as she returned to the kitchen. Outside the house, Taeyo was surprised to see Sia about to enter Jin Ju's house. He approached her and learned that Sia was staying with Jin Ju. To prevent her from entering, Tao confessed his love, which startled her, and he invited her to talk at a cafe. Si had explained that she belonged to Jun Jae, while Tao appeared remorseful, though he secretly sent a message to Num Du to leave Sia's residence. After Num Du informed Jun Jae, they quickly left, claiming they had other matters to attend to. When they arrived home, Jun Jae was upset with Num Du for not gathering more detailed information about Jin Ju. Numdu argued that Sia was not listed on Jin Ju's family register, 
That night, Junjae opened his phone's gallery and came across a photo of an urn with a mermaid painting and a man. This made him want to see Seem Chong. Unfortunately, she wasn't in her room, and he found pearls there, which triggered memories of the incident when she saved him and erased his memory using her mermaid powers. In the past, Dub Myung received a report about Yang, who had accused him of murder and reported him to the central government after being deceived by an evil mermaid. In the present, Seem Chong, having left Junjae's house, was riding a carousel at the mall when she met Chi Yoon, who wondered why she was alone there. When she mentioned that she lived with Jun Jae, Chi Yoon offered to take her home after overhearing their conversation. However, she invited him to a sauna instead, where she caused a scene by entering the men's section. Chi Yoon got worried about her and decided to go along. Meanwhile, a group of high school students noticed the money Sim Chong put in her bag in the changing room. When she left, they took her bag to a small alley, where they found money and a mobile phone. They turned on the phone, revealing Sim Chong's location through GPS, which Jun Jae used to track her down. He threatened to report the students to the police unless they returned her bag. Jun Jae then went to the sauna and hugged Sim Chong when he saw her, not realizing that Chi Yoon was also there. Chi Yoon explained the situation and Jun Jae returned her bag, telling her to go home. However, she refused to return to his house. They talked and Sim Chong expressed her disappointment in Jun Jae and the others for being a fraud. After understanding her reasons, Jun Jae eventually allowed her to stay at the sauna temporarily. Outside the sauna, Jun Jae met Chi Yoon, who informed him about El Jung's illness, but Jun Jae appeared indifferent and told his stepbrother to continue taking care of their father. On the other hand, Hong Dong Pyo and his team went through Ma Dong's records, which revealed that he had lived with a woman named Kang Ji Hoon in the past. Oddly, two of Kang Ji Hoon's previous husbands had suffered sudden vision problems and died shortly after their weddings. Meanwhile, So Ye Hong asked Dong Pyo about El Jung's eye condition. Dong Pyo explained that he planned to see a doctor because the medication he had been prescribed didn't seem to be working. At the same time, Sia entered Yu Run's room and accidentally saw an old family photo. She didn't realize that the young boy in the picture with Yu Run was Jun Jae. That night, Dae Yang disguised himself as a taxi driver to observe Sim Chong, who was going to the park with Jun Jae. Simultaneously, Dong Pyu and his team were also near the park, acting on a tip about Dae Yang's whereabouts. Unfortunately, they didn't find the wanted criminal, but they did come across Jun Jae, who was on the police's radar for suspected fraud. As a result, Dong Pyu immediately handcuffed Jun Jae, who didn't want Sim Chong to know about his arrest and could only watch her from a distance. Inside the police car, Jun Jae realized the police were planning to arrest Dae Yong in the park. He suspected that Dae Yong was chasing him and Sim Chong. Jun Jae asked Detective Dong Pyo to release him and allow him to call Sim Chong. Eventually, Detective Dong Pyo agreed. In the phone call, Jun Jae told Sim Chong to go home first because he had some matters to attend to. She entered a taxi, thinking it was a regular one, but it turned out to be driven by Dae Yong. Jun Jae stayed on the phone with her and tried to figure out her location by asking about the roads she saw. She mentioned Num Sun Tower, but the call suddenly went dead, and they couldn't reach Sim Chong's phone. Jun Jae informed Detective Dong Pyo that Dae Yong had kidnapped Sim Chong and posed as a taxi driver near Num Sun Tower. Detective Dong Pyo released Jun Jae from the handcuffs and ordered a search for Dae Yong. When they couldn't find him, Jun Jae suspected that Dae Yong might have entered a tunnel and asked Detective Dong Pyo to check the area around the tunnel. Meanwhile, Sim Chong appeared unconscious in the car after Dae Yong drugged her. He stopped the car at an abandoned hospital building and carried her into an operating room. When Sim Chong woke up, she saw Dae Yong preparing a water tank but couldn't move her legs to escape. Back to Dong Pyo and Jun Jae, they found the taxi Dae Yong had used in front of the old hospital building. They immediately split up to search for Dae Yong. In the operating room, Dae Yong intended to put Sim Chong into the water tank, but had second thoughts after a vision of a man warning him about touching a mermaid. He heard someone approaching and hastily left Sim Chong behind. A few moments later, Jun Jae finally found Sim Chong and Dae Yong's car was seen leaving the hospital building area, leaving Detective Dong Pyo frustrated as he had once again failed to capture his fugitive. When Num Du and Tao arrived at Jun Jae and Sim Chong's home with Dong Pyo, they were surprised to find out that Dong Pyo was the detective who had been keeping an eye on them. Jun Jae promptly showed them surveillance camera footage of Dae Yong lurking around their house and a message from Dae Yong sent through Num's phone. 
They realized that Jun Jae and his friends could help the police catch Dae Yong. So Dong Pyo decided not to arrest Jun Jae and his friends until they captured the main police fugitive. At home, Sophie was preparing medicine for El Jong and secretly replaced his eye drops with a different medication. Chi Yoon silently watched his mother's actions and took the medication after she left the room. Meanwhile, at Ho Jung's lawyer's office, the attorney named Yoon Tae explained the process of legalizing Ho Jung's will. El Jung revealed his intention to leave all his wealth to Jim Jae, surprising Yoon Tae. Yoon Tae suggested that El Jung allocate a portion of the inheritance to his wife and Chi Yoon, El Jung steps in. However, El Jung remained firm in his decision, leaving Chi Yoon, who had overheard the entire conversation from outside the room, shocked by his father's choice. During the day, so he asked Yoon Tae for assistance in convincing El Jung to modify his will so that he would leave all his wealth to Chi Yoon. She even arranged for two paid witnesses to be present during the will's legalization. When the day for signing the will arrived, El Jung, whose eyesight was worsening, couldn't read the contents of the will clearly. He had to rely on Yoon Tae and the two witnesses who had come. At the location of the stolen taxi driven by Dae Yong, Dong Pyo and Jun Jade couldn't find the taxi's black box or any evidence, suggesting that Dae Yong had used the vehicle. Jun Jae then thought that the police might find Dae Yong's fingerprints in the water tank at the abandoned hospital building they had visited earlier. So, Dong Pyo planned to examine it while questioning Dae Yong about his intentions for filling the water tank. Around the same time, Yu Run, who had just returned from the market, had her bag snatched by a man. Fortunately, Seem Chong chased after the thief and managed to recover Yu Run's bag. On another occasion, Sia invited Yu Run to Jun Jae's house to cook, and Yu Run reunited with Seem Chong, who seemed happy to see Jun Jae's mother. Sia then went into Jun Jae's room and found his childhood photos with his mother. After looking at these pictures, which resembled a young Yu Run's son, Sia began to suspect that Yu Run, who had been their household assistant, was Jun Jae's mother. That's why she promptly convinced Yu Run to return home to avoid running into Jun Jae. When they got home, Sia secretly entered Yu Run's room to compare Jun Jae's childhood photos, making her more convinced that Jun Jae was Yu Run's son. After learning this, Sia started treating Yu Run better which left her puzzled by the change in Sia's attitude. That night, Jun Jae met Seem Chong to ask her about why Dae Yong had prepared the water tank earlier. However, Seem Chong was deeply worried about Dae Yong discovering her mermaid identity, a secret she couldn't share with Jun Jae. Seeing her distressed, Jun Jae tried to understand that she was still traumatized by the kidnapping. He hugged her and encouraged her to forget about the traumatic events. Meanwhile, at El Jung's home, his eyesight was deteriorating and he accidentally headed towards the staircase on the second floor without realizing it. So he deliberately caused her husband to fall down the stairs. Shortly after, Chi Yoon rushed to his unconscious father and looked at his mother, who was watching from the top of the stairs. Concerned for his father's life, Chi Yoon immediately rushed El Jung to the hospital, ultimately saving him. On another occasion, Jun Jae was reading documents about Dum Yong left by Sia. The documents mentioned Dum Yong's possible death, while he was being transported into exile by sea, and all of Dum Yong's belongings had sunk with the ship. On the other hand, Yu Run was walking home alone and narrowly escaped a car that almost hit her if it weren't for Seem Chong, who quickly rescued her. Surprisingly, it was so he who had instructed her driver to harm El Jung's first wife. The driver also revealed to Sovi that Yu Run worked as a household assistant at Jin Ju's house, the person Sovi was supposed to meet that day. When they reached Jin Ju's house, so he finally encountered Yu Run, who brought her a drink. They had a heated argument, leaving Jin Ju in stunned silence, realizing that Yu Run was El Jung's ex-wife. Back at Jun Jae's home, Dong Pyo and his colleague arrived to discuss the progress in Dae Yong's case, joined by Num Du, who mentioned he hadn't found any information about Ji Yoon Dae Yong's wife. After some time with El Jung's health improving and his ability to resume activities after his fall down the stairs, so he deliberately asked Dae Yong to become her husband's new assistant. Oh Jong, unaware due to his worsening eyesight, didn't suspect anything. Meanwhile, Jin Ju treated Yu Run kindly upon discovering that her household assistant was El Jung's ex-wife. After having dinner with Yu Run, Jin Ju met Sia to discuss Yu Run, and she was shocked to learn that Yu Run was Jun Jae's mother. That evening, Sia, trying to ease her heartbreak after Jun Jae's rejection, got in touch with Tao to pick her up from a nightclub. When Num Du and Seem Chong learned that Tao was heading to the nightclub, they decided to join him. When they arrived at the club, 
Seem Chong's performance captivated everyone. Meanwhile, Jun Jae got word that Seem Chong was at the nightclub and immediately went there to bring her back home. In the hospital, Shi Yoon approached Num, who had regained consciousness, and questioned him about Dae Yong's attempt to harm him. He soon realized that Num knew about the relationship between Dae Yong and Sovi. Panicking to keep his mother's secret safe, Chi Yoon disconnected Num's oxygen supply. When he later worried about El Jung's assistance condition, Dae Yong arrived and took Chi Yoon away from the room. In the meantime, Num, in critical condition again, had flashbacks to his past in the Joe Sond era, when he was Dum Yong's confidant. Back then, Dum Yong had promised to make Num his closest companion if they ever met again in the future. On her birthday, Seem Chong was busy preparing for her celebration at home. After finishing the preparations, she went to pick up Yu Run, who was coming to her party. At the same time, Jun Jae was buying a birthday gift for Seem Chong at a flower shop. On his way back, he spotted Seem Chong and Mo Yu Run on the opposite side of the road. Seem Chong called out his name, revealing to Mo Yu Run that Ho Jun Jae was her long lost son. Jun Jae, seemingly able to hear Seem Chong's heartfelt words, informing Yu Run that she was his mother couldn't believe that he was reuniting with his mother after all these years. They crossed the road, and Yu Run immediately hugged her son, while Jun Jae appeared tearful at the reunion. Back at home, after Seem Chong blew out her birthday candles, she asked to relight them because they were celebrating the reunion of Jun Jae and Yu Run. On another occasion, Jun Jae called Dong Pyo to share his suspicion that so he might have ordered Dae Yong to follow him. Meanwhile, Yu Run went to Jin Ju's house and had a conversation with Sia who appeared somewhat embarrassed to meet her. Yu Run expressed her gratitude to Sia for being a good friend to Jun Jae. Returning to Jun Jae, he met with Chi Yoon to ask about their father's whereabouts. Chi Yoon lied, claiming their father was on vacation in Hawaii. Since he didn't trust his stepbrother's information, Jun Jae sought Dong Pyo's help to locate their father. The detective confirmed that El Jong was still in Korea. He also informed Nam Du about Sovi's actions and their plan to find evidence in their father's house. Although hesitant at first, Num Du eventually agreed to help. Unexpectedly, Seem Chong overheard their conversation, so Num Du asked for her assistance in keeping Chi Yun at her home while they carried out their plan. That night, with Dong Pyo's help, Jun Jae and the others disguised themselves as pest control officers and infiltrated El Jung's house. Meanwhile, Seem Chong invited Chi Yun to meet at a restaurant to buy some time and prevent him from returning home. Numdu appeared to divert the household assistant's attention at El Jung's house, while Taeho disabled the security system and Jun Jae collected suspicious items. After discreetly placing a bug under the table, Jun Jae quietly went upstairs to confront his father. Unfortunately, El Jung's blurred vision prevented him from recognizing his son, and Jun Jae recounted all the things Sobi had done, even asking his father to leave the house. El Jung, who had heard about Jun Jae's occupation as a fraud, appeared to be skeptical of his son's words. On the other hand, after Chi Yoon returned home, Dae Yong attempted to approach Seem Chong who was alone and tampered with the water pipes in the parking area. Seem Chong ran to avoid the water, preventing her from reverting to her mermaid form. Dae Yong continued to chase her to the rooftop, where she tightly held his arm and erased his memory. As a result, when Dae Yong received a call from Sophie, he didn't recognize her and had no memory of who he really was. Outside El Jung's house, Dong Pyo, who was on watch duty, informed Jun Jae that El Jung needed eye surgery soon. Meanwhile, Tao continued his search for witnesses and the lawyer who had legalized the fake will on El Jung's behalf. On another day, so he once again gave her husband medicine. However, El Jung, recalling Jun Jae's words, discreetly disposed of the medicine in the trash can after she left the room. That night, El Jung woke up and noticed that Sovi had left the bed. He overheard her talking to someone and tried to eavesdrop on their conversation. Surprisingly, Sovi asked Dae Yong to stay temporarily in their house's basement to prevent her husband from making contact with anyone. Hearing this, El Jung attempted to return to his room to avoid being caught eavesdropping, but he stumbled on the stairs, which led him to hide behind the sofa. His blurred vision prevented him from realizing that Sovi had seen his shadow, and she discovered that El Jung had heard their entire conversation. Don Pio, who was outside the house with his colleague, played a recording of Sovi's voice in Jun Jae's house. At that time, they didn't know who she was speaking to. Turning to Sohee, who had returned to El Jung's room, she gave him medicine and a drink as usual. However, El Jung, thinking she had left, 
discreetly discarded the medicine and only drank the water from the glass she had given him. Unbeknownst to him, so he was still in the room, observing his every move. Shortly after, El Jung started to feel unwell, because the drink so he had given him was laced with poison. He made an effort to reach for his phone to call Jun Jae, but his son was busy discussing things with Dong Pio and didn't hear his phone ring. Since his call went unanswered, El Jung left a voicemail for his son, apologizing. Worried about his father's condition, Jun Jae hurried to El Jung's house, only to discover that his father had passed away. Just before El Jung passed away, Chi Yoon, who had been waiting outside his father's room, overheard El Jung's final apology to both Jun Jae and him. This brought tears to Chi Yoon's eyes, and he entered the room only to find his father lifeless. Examining the glass from which El Jung had drunk, Chi Yoon realized it was poisoned, intentionally given to his father by his own mother. In an effort to dispose of the evidence, Chi Yoon quickly washed the glass and contacted the police. When the police arrived, they questioned Chi Yoon and then took El Jung's body to the hospital for a medical examination. Jun Jae, upon seeing his lifeless father, immediately approached Chi Yoon, who was with a detective, and lashed out at his stepbrother, blaming both Chi Yoon and So Hee for El Jung's death. In the hospital, So Hee attempted to display her grief by crying and even pretended to lose consciousness but no one paid much attention to her actions. On another occasion, Yu Run met with Jun Jae to inquire about El Jung's death. She also recounted her previous encounter with El Jung, where he didn't recognize her at his house due to his eye condition, which Jun Jae informed her about. Meanwhile, So Hee seemed to contact Yun Tae and asked him to proceed with the legal process for El Jung's fake inheritance. At the same time, Chi Yun met Num Du at the hospital and proposed a collaboration to eliminate Jun Jae even offering a significant sum of money as an incentive for Numdu to carry out the plan. The next morning, Dong Pyo arrived with a search warrant to inspect El Jung's house, so he, dressed in mourning attire, calmly greeted the police officers who had come. They searched the house thoroughly, but no suspicious evidence was found. During El Jung's funeral, Yu Run attended with Jin Ju. While Yu Run was in the restroom, so he approached her and said hurtful things, leading to Yu Run slapping So he. This upset So he, and she intended to slap Yu Run back. But Sim Chong stopped her to read So Hee's thoughts. With her abilities, Sim Chong finally learned about all of So Hee's actions, including intentionally poisoning El Jong and hiding Dae Yong. Shortly afterward, Sim Chong brought Jun Jae and Dong Pio to the basement of El Jong's house. There they discovered a hidden room containing poisonous flowers, which the police had been searching for as evidence. With this discovery, Dong Pio went to El Jong's funeral and declared El Jung's death a murder case, ensuring an autopsy and the arrest of So Hee as the prime suspect, backed by the newly found evidence. At the police station, Yun Tae met with So Hee and advised her not to answer investigators' questions, which eventually led to her release after the detention period expired. On the other hand, while Jun Jae was heading to his car in the parking lot, Num Du suddenly came up and hit him on the head with a piece of metal from behind, knocking him out. Taho, who was checking the security camera footage, witnessed the attack and quickly alerted Sim Chong. They followed the car driven by Num Du. When they reached a warehouse area, Num Du brought Jun Jae to meet Chi Yoon and So Hee, who were waiting there. Chi Yoon instructed Num Du to tie Jun Jae to a chair, and when Jun Jae woke up and questioned Num Du's actions, Num Du injected a substance into Jun Jae's leg, causing him intense pain. Unexpectedly, Dong Pyo and his team emerged from their hiding place to capture So Hee and Chi Yoon. Some time earlier, after Num Du met Chi Yoon at the hospital, he revealed everything to Jun Jae and Dong Pyo, suggesting they cooperate by pretending to go along with So Hee and Chi Yoon's plans. Back in the present, as they saw So Hee handcuffed and being taken away from the warehouse, Chi Yoon also captured, attempted to revolt, and grabbed a police officer's gun, aiming it at Jun Jae. Sim Chong, witnessing this, remembered that Chi Yoon's ancestors were responsible for Dum Yang's death in the past, so she tried to shield Jun Jae by hugging him. Chi Yoon fired a shot, which hit Sim Chong, causing her to lose consciousness. Other police officers quickly subdued Chi Yoon and secured him. Before the interrogation, Chi Yoon went to the restroom, where he drank a poisonous injection he had brought with him out of frustration with his life. Shortly after the interrogation, Chi Yoon collapsed and so he aware of what had happened, entered the interrogation room and witnessed her son's death due to poisoning. Meanwhile, Joan Jae and the others were waiting for Sim Chong's surgery at the hospital. During this time, 
Numdu informed Jun Jae that Dong Pyo had shared news about Chi Yun's death, which surprised Jun Jae. After the operation, Sim Chong was transferred to a hospital room, where the doctor informed Jun Jae that she was recovering well, despite the bullet having penetrated her heart. On the other hand, Dayong sought the help of a psychotherapist to recover his lost memories. After going through several sessions, he finally recalled his past life as Yong and attempted to harm the therapist by choking her. Thankfully, Dong Pio and Jun Jae arrived in time to rescue the therapist and apprehend Dayong. On different day, Jun Jae paid a visit to Num, whose condition was getting better. For the first time, Num referred to Jun Jae as Dum Yong because he had realized that in their past lives, they had been Dum Yong's trusted aides. A few days later, Sim Chong, who had returned from the hospital, suddenly felt heart pain after staying on land for too long. She had to return to the ocean immediately to prevent her heart from freezing. Before leaving, she erased Jun Jae's memories to spare him the sadness of her departure. She bid farewell to Numdu and the others before heading back to the sea. As she reached the seashore, Sim Chong returned to her underwater world as a mermaid. Three years later, Jun Jae asked Numdu and Teo, who were still living with him, to find their own place but you run instead, suggested that they stay until they got married. On another occasion, Jun Jae started working as an intern at the prosecutor's office. There he met Dong Pio, who invited him to share a meal. Dong Pio expressed relief that Jun Jae had chosen to use his abilities for good. Meanwhile, Num Du switched careers and became a teacher. In the evening, they all gathered at Jun Jae's house, and Teo, who also lived with them, had a job as a white hacker at a prestigious company. Towards the end of the series, Sim Chong finally returned to land. Her first action was to sell her pearls and visit Jun Jae's house, even though he didn't remember her. That night, Sim Chong, saddened by Jun Jae's lack of recognition, watched the first snowfall of the winter while crouching down. To her surprise, Jun Jae came to shelter her, and he revealed that he still remembered everything about her. They were happily reunited from that moment on. Moral lesson from the story. It's important to value the moments and the people who make your journey special, even if you need to adjust your memories along the ride.